I'll be reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, once again, we come this morning to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for another Sunday morning, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord God. But most of all, Lord God, we thank you for having your way. Father God, we ask you to bless the sick and the shedding, Lord God. We got so many people that are sick. sick. We pray for King, son. He's sick, Lord. We ask you to touch his body, Lord, not just only him. We praying for Shirley Tyler, Lord God. There are so many others, Lord, that we are praying for. But Lord, we know they are in your care. We continue to ask you, Lord God, to bless our pastor, his wife, his family. Continue to bless our church and our church family and their family. Lord, just, just, just thank you, Lord, just for being so good. Thank you, Father God, where you have brought us from and where we at today, Lord. Continue to use us, Lord God. Continue to have your way in our life, Lord. Father God, we just want to give you glory. We want to give you praise, Lord. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Because we can't do anything without you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you said high, but you look so low, Lord God, and you see everything. Continue to bless our president, our mayor, our governor, all our fishing leaders, Lord God. But Father God, we know who is our leader. We trust in you. We walk by faith and not by sight. And Father, your word, you say every knee must bow and every tongue must prevail that you are Lord. So Father God, we say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for all you have done and all you planning to do, Lord. Bless us on here this morning, Lord God. Continues to use us, Lord God. We need you, Lord. What can we do without you, Father God? Father God, we can't do anything. We can't walk. We can't talk. We can't even breathe without you, Lord God. So we need you, Lord God. Continue this, bless this mean street of New York, Lord. So much is killing. It's going on, Lord God. We don't know, but Lord, we know who's our in charge. We know that we trust in you, Lord God, and you can do all things but fail. So we thank you this morning, Lord, and we continue to love you, Lord. Keep us in your care. As we travel back and forth in this street of mean street of New York, Lord, cover us with your blood. Cover our household. Bless our neighborhood, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we love you. We love you, and we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, come on and bless the name of the Lord, for truly he is worthy. Come on, he's a big old worthy God, deserving of a worthy praise. Come on, why do you think, how do you know that God is worthy? He's worthy because he gives you his time. The Lord is worthy because he gives us his attention. The Lord our God is worthy because he endows us with his love, his protection. Hallelujah. His hands and his arms are always around us. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. And we thank you this morning for being the God, hallelujah, who is above all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, Lord Jesus, because it is you who deserve it. We, you deserve the honor. You deserve the praise, God. And we lift up your name. Come on, tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for your glory. Honor, Lord. Yeah. Come on, you got a few seconds. Give the Lord your praise. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your lungs. Sing songs of Zion unto the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the you are For everything you are, Lord, you are the. Come on, for everything you've done, give him the glory. Come on, for everything that it promised. 
wants to be in your life, give God the glory. Come on, you got 10 seconds left. Come on, nine, give him the glory. Come on, seven, give God the glory. Come on, five, we're counting down. Four, you're worthy, you're worthy. Three, come on, God is worthy. Come on, one, 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 he's the one. The Lord our God is the one. You're the one, oh God. You're the one that we praise. You're the one that we magnify. You're the one that we lift up. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. You're the one. You're the one, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the one, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, if it had not been for the Lord our God who was on your side, where would you be? Come on, who would you be? Come on, what would become of you if it had not been for the Lord our God? Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah of the praise. God, we give you all the glory. Come on, somebody say it. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory.
know that the Lord is the coming of all of the glory. Let me hear you sing, oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. Come on, he's worthy. Come on, God already has done for you. Come on, the Lord has helped you. The Lord brought you out of no way. Hallelujah. Come on, he was the light in the midst of your darkness. He was the answer, problem, God. Hallelujah! Oh yes, you are God. Oh yes, you are God. Hallelujah! Come on, heaven, He given you water in the dry places. Come on, heaven, He been there for you. Hallelujah! Come on, we serve a worthy God who's deserving of all of the glory. Hallelujah! Yes, you are God. Hallelujah! Big old God. We call you great Jehovah, the Lord who provides. Hallelujah. Come on, hasn't the Lord done enough? He's done more than enough. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God for overflow. Hallelujah. In the spirit realm, we call you great Jehovah God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Things will change. 
us who retains us oh God and we bless you we bless you son of God hallelujah the name of Jesus be lifted high what a wonderful name what a name full of glory it's a glorious name hallelujah Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. This is LRBC News. I am Lady Latama McCray reporting. Today is Sunday, June 6, 2021. I am extending a warm welcome to you, the Little Rock Baptist Church family, and our friends who are worshiping with us at The Rock. We love you, and we hope you are blessed by our online virtual worship experience. Help us spread the gospel by following us on Facebook Live and YouTube by liking and sharing today's virtual worship experience and also by taking and posting your selfie, hashtag worshiping at the rock. This is a great opportunity to share with you all our vision mission statement, and our motto. Our vision is to become a transformed people through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be a Christian community of faith with a heart to meet people where they are. Our mission statement is to exalt our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through a lifestyle of worship, to evangelize the unbeliever through our Christian witness, to empower and edify the believer through the preaching and teaching of God's word, to work to create a culture and an atmosphere that is conducive for lives to be changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, our core values are worship, witness, and God's word as we work together to change lives. And we all know our motto, there is no rock like Little Rock because we stand on the big rock. Today is Holy Communion. You still have time to get your elements ready to partake with us at the end of this service. Join us for Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning on Zoom. Please contact Dr. Marriott to retrieve the Zoom ID and password, or you may gain access with the information provided on your screen. 
Join us for Wednesday in the Word at 6.30 a.m. for our Consecrated Conversation Conference Call and at 7 p.m. for our Bible study via Facebook Live, Zoom, and YouTube. It's offering time. Thank you so much for your liberal and your sacrificial giving during this pandemic. Let us remain consistent by sending in our tithes, offering, building fund, and our online virtual worship support. Continue to use the four ways to give that are on your screen. Option number one, you can mail your gift to the church, 375 Bristol Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11212. Option two, contact your deacon or your deaconess for pickup. Option three, lrbcgiving at gmail.com via Zelle. Option four, dollar sign Little Rock Give via Cash App. My brothers and my sisters, because we have been so diligent in following the pandemic plan, we are on our way to a new normal. Let us continue to follow the CDC guidelines that are in place so we can be together soon. God bless you all. Well, that's my time. Thank you so much for your undivided attention. This has been the Iraq Report. I am Lady Latama McRae. Now, let's get back to the sanctuary so we can continue our online virtual worship experience. Love ya. We thank and praise the Lord our God for everything it is that he's done for us. And even better, what he's promised to do. Don't you know that there are some promises that are stored up, that are laid up for us? Hallelujah. Eyes have not seen. Ear, my God, have not heard. Hallelujah. There is more to come, saints of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's more. More, more, more. There's more to come. The Son of Man is lifted high. The Son of Man is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. If you believe that to be so, we are giving you another opportunity to sing it with us. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high.
somebody on this live knows that we serve a wonderful God. The Bible records that his name shall be called Wonderful. Not only is he wonderful, but God is also glorious. Thank you, praise team, for allowing God to use you for God's glory. And thank you, musicians, for the part that you play in this worship. And to the leadership of the Little Rock Baptist Church and to all of you, my father's children. Our friends that are on the live, I greet you in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For it is at the name of Jesus that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. I'm honored and privileged to stand before you in this undeserved moment that God has afforded you and I to worship our King. Hallelujah. I want to hasten to this word. I'm eager to preach and I want to I want you to navigate your way to Mark's gospel. Mark chapter 8. Uh, these last two weeks uh, we've been in a series entitled Being Committed After the Coronavirus and I thought the Lord would have me leave it there in those two weeks but God is impressed upon my spirit to continue in this vein as we prepare uh, to shift another shift that God is preparing us for to uh, come back uh, in the near future and I think I believe that God wants to prepare us uh, for our new posture as we come back into the sanctuary as new believers. Uh, this time away should have afforded us the opportunity to get some things right and to change and recommit, refocus as it relates to our witness as we work to change lives. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, beginning at verse number 34. Mark 8, beginning at verse number 34. One verse in your hearing. King James Version declares, And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. New International Version states, Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For a few moments of our time that we have to share with one another, I want to preach from the topic as the Spirit of the Lord shall guide requirements for discipleship. Requirements for discipleship. Will you write that in the comment section? Requirements for discipleship. Do you pause and whisper words of prayer with me. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And O oh God, my master, we pause to give you praise. We pause to give you glory. And we pause to give you honor. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. O oh God, you're so wonderful, so glorious. Bible declares that what is man or woman that thou art mindful of them that the son of man come and visiteth him thank you God for the visitation of your spirit and your presence that we feel 
in this moment. And God, as we feel your presence, we pause to hear a word from you. It's preaching time, oh God, and I can't preach unless you preach through me. I can't move unless you move me. I can't walk unless you hold my hand. God, hide me behind thine rugged cross that men, women, boys, and girls will see you and not me and take me out of self and use me for your divine glory. Decrease my cray now that you may increase in the name of Jesus and God. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, pick me up. If I'm too far, draw me in. Give me your power to preach to your people. And my prayer today is that someone will be saved. Someone will be healed. Someone will be set free. Someone even be encouraged, inspired, uplifted, edified through the preaching and teaching of your gospel. And now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That all who love the Lord shout amen. Uh, I want to talk for a few moments, requirements for discipleship. Brothers and sisters, by this time in Jesus' life, he was well engulfed, immersed, and involved into his earthly ministry. Jesus had already done many amazing and miraculous things. Jesus had already healed many diseases and sicknesses. He had already opened blinded eyes and had already astounded and amazed many by his teachings. He had fed many with both physical food as well as spiritual food. By now Jesus was drawing many crowds. Many people were intrigued and in increasingly interested in Mary, the young girl from a ghetto called Nazareth, and Joseph the carpenter's boy named Jesus. Jesus, our Christ, had already preached and showed his power and proclaimed the kingdom. Yet although he had healed the sick, taught with wisdom and power, opened blinded eyes, and even walked on water, Jesus was still faced with a dilemma. Brothers and sisters, his dilemma was this. Those who were walking with him still did not quite know who they were walking with. And although they saw his power manifested in many ways, those who walked the closest with him still had not realized that the Messiah who they were looking for was right in their presence. These brothers, these disciples still hadn't gotten the full revelation of who they were walking with. And prior to our point of preachment, Jesus asked his disciples an important question. Jesus asked them, whom do men say that I am? They answered and said, some say you're John the Baptist, and some say you are Isaiah. Some, some think you are one of the prophets. Jesus ignored those incorrect assessments and redirected the question on them. Jesus asked the disciples, but whom say ye that I am? Jesus asked them, y'all, who do y'all say that I am? Eleven of them remained quiet, yet Peter, by revelation, preaches the gospel and declares, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus confirmed that the Holy Ghost revealed this truth to Peter and proceeded to set the church's foundation in order. Jesus declared, Upon this rock, upon this statement, upon this declaration, upon this revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, Jesus told the 12 disciples and you and I today that the church will be built and stabilized on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. And the forces of Hades or hell will never win or triumph or conquer or overcome or be victorious or even succeed over the church. And that's good news for you and I today in, the, in this present pandemic uh, uh, that, that, 
that 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 that, that we are living in today that when, when hate is being manifested in a multiplicity of ways that's that's good news today in in this time of plague and political posturing and problematic policies that's that's good news today in this day that you and I are living in that with oh uh, with the overt racism and systemic oppression and an obvious targeting of black and brown boys and girls that that's good news that's why it does not make sense to trip at what is going on in the world what is promoting accepting and doing that's why we should not spend our time worrying about what things are happening on the outside because Jesus said hell can't and won't prevail over the church uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand and after Jesus told them the foundation of the church would be established on this declaration, this revelation, this statement of truth that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and, and Jesus checks, corrects, and rebukes Peter and the devil. He told all of them who were in proximity and even us today what it takes to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this text lifted for our consideration, our Lord revealed to us, number one, what is expected to follow Jesus. Number two, what it means to follow Jesus. And number three, what is required of all who desire following after Jesus. What's interesting to me, my brothers and sisters, in the text is, is the A clause in this powerful verse. Notice, beloved, who Jesus called to hear, hear these requirements to follow Jesus. Jesus called the crowd as well as the disciples to hear what he was about to say and don't y'all miss that don't don't just glance over that don't don't just read over uh, these words in the holy writ don't don't skip over because this point is important because the reality is hear me everybody that is around Jesus ain't necessarily a follower of Jesus let, 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 let me get closer in your living room because, because I feel some of y'all looking at me kind of strange because everybody who comes to church and everybody who wants to come back to the church, help me here, Holy Ghost, or claims to be Christian, that, that does not mean they are disciples or committed to following Christ. Look, it's right here in the text. Jesus called the people along with the disciples. And let me drop this in your spirit. There is a fundamental difference between Jesus' disciples and people who are just hanging around Jesus. The word disciple at its core means one who embraces and assists in spreading the teachings of another. One who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of of another the word or description goes far beyond the 12 brethren who were called to be a part of our Christ in a circle now on the contrary beloved to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ has a far broader scope intention and meaning hear me to be a disciple of our Christ is one must be a follower who accepts and assists in the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ the you on Gilead to be a disciple of Jesus by my brothers and sisters you you are willing uh, to be a follower and a learner of the master here's a tragedy y'all unfortunately uh, the church pre-pandemic uh, we, we were too focused and we didn't put enough emphasis on the reality that we are to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ the truth is our emphasis has uh, had become membership and not discipleship now I want to submit to you today that if you come to church if you want to come back to church simply because you are a member or just come to hang around Jesus and if you aren't actively trying to develop uh, and grow into a disciple of Jesus you my brother my sister are in uh, 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 in the wrong space uh, and, and simply uh, let me just be frank you're wasting your time uh, the great 
pastor and theologian Diedrich Bonhoeffer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, uh, called this attitude or mindset a cheap grace. He said cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Here it is, he says cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. And far too many of us pre-pandemic we're majoring in the minors. And Jesus wants us to be, wanted us to be, and still does want us to be followers of Jesus uh, and not fussing folk. Je Jesus is calling us to discipleship. And there, there, there are three requirements, my brothers and sisters, uh, to discipleship that Jesus dropped in the laps of all those listening. And even you and I today, that must be evident and apparent if we all plan to come back uh, as a, a, a body of blood washed believers if we plan to totally y'all write in the comment section write totally and, and authentically come on write authentically and, and, and fully write fully fully and, and if we all intend on following Jesus in other words if you are a true disciple these are the requirements. J Jesus said, whosoever will come after me, here it is, number one, let him or her deny themselves. Lord, the, uh, to, to deny yourself means to renounce all self-dependence, self-interest, and self-pursuits which are contrary to God. The Bible tells you and I, True discipleship means we must turn away from selfish ways. Now, I know this is real tough for most of us here because the average person in this, in this culture and society thinks it's all about those three people that you look in the mirror every morning and, and, and before you go to bed at night, they call me, myself, and I. Jesus told them, if you're going to follow me, it, it can't be all about you. I love the way Eugene Peterson's message Bible translates this text. The message Bible said, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Here it is. Eugene Peterson said, you're not in the driver's seat. I am. In other words, We've got to turn our lives over to him and prioritize, prioritize the kingdom. You, you got to let God lead your marriage. Uh, in the pandemic, have you let God lead in your relationship? Have you started the work to let him lead on your job and let God lead uh, your decisions and let God lead your behavior and let God lead in your finances and let God lead in your home and in your relationship? And you and I, when we get back in the church, we've got to let God lead. Somebody holler back at me and shout the church. The, the first requirement Jesus leaves for you and I is Jesus said you must deny yourself. Another requirement for discipleship Jesus gave us is this. Number two, Jesus said you have to take up your cross. Luke's gospel and Luke 9 says take up your cross daily. And oftentimes we use this, this, this term kind of tongue in cheek. We use this term that, that, that j that's just my cross to bear. But, but the cross that Jesus is referring to is much more significant than a saying and much more important than a colloquialism. No, all that Jesus did, all that Jesus taught, all the miracles, he, his entire life, all of what he had to endure pointed him to the cross. All of it pointed to his divine destiny. All of it led to his assignment. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you have to get, you have to get to and follow and fulfill your earthly assignment. 
And if you are a true disciple, you must be working towards or already working towards your assignment. And what I'm concerned about is that we wasted this year. Too many of us have wasted this year and not gotten ourselves ready and geared and fired up and, uh, and ready to get back into what and find out what our purpose is. And when we find it, we'll follow it with reckless abandon. I'm, I'm concerned about us. Uh, because I, I feel a spirit of one to get back to what was normal and comfortable instead of who and I finding what that cross is and taking that cross like Jesus did while they spit on him, while they talked about him, while they scandalized him. I want to tell you, let me park here parenthetically, your cross, uh, some people are going to talk about you. Your, your cross is going to make you cry, but it's yours. Yeah, your cross is going to cause some suffering but it's yours your cross will cause you to lose some friends but it's yours your, your cross is going to have people who were close to you they will break your heart your cross but it's yours people will talk about you and scandalize your name but 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 take your cross anyhow because here it is my brothers and sisters there is a reward at the end of the assignment uh philippians 2 8 to 11 tells us what the reward was when Jesus took up his cross. Uh, Paul said, and being found in fashion as a man, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Somebody holler, assignment. And, and wherefore God, he is the reward, hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. Woo! Every knee should bow every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father I want to tell you if you will just carry your cross long enough uh, there's a crown I heard uh, somebody said no cross no crown number two Jesus said you must take up your cross or walk or fulfill your assignment if you're going to follow me I'm through y'all last and finally Jesus said if you're going to follow me, deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross. But here, here's it, here it is right here, y'all. Number three, you have to follow me. This is a powerful and challenging request, my brothers and sisters, because Jesus is speaking about a lifestyle that doesn't belong to you. Galatians 2 and 20 said, uh, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live net yet not I but Christ lives in me here it is the essence of this request is this to follow Jesus is to be willing to take on the risk of losing everything for his sake and the sake of the gospel let me ask y'all a couple questions as I get ready uh, to move on to our communion what are you willing to risk what, what are you willing, what have you been willing to give up in the pandemic? What have, what have you been willing to lose? How invested are you in the kingdom? Because a whole, a whole year has caused perhaps some of us to get real comfortable and not, 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 readily re not ready to get back with our shoulders to the plow. The, the, the last request, y'all, speaks of investment. And it's clear that Jesus suggests and reveals that to follow him means to be all in. Jesus and his ways, all in to Jesus and his ways, all in to obeying his commandments, all in uh, to following his statues. I know, I know my eyes are going down. I know the numbers are going down now because when we talk about committing to our Christ, uh, uh, so many of us wanna, don't want to hear that word. We want to lift up our hands with emotion, but we won't, don't want to stand firm with commitment. Jesus in his ways, obeying his commandments and following his statutes. Jesus must be our priority when we come back into these four walls when we get back together Jesus must be our priority and our priority must be doing the will of he, him who sent us here it is y'all we got to follow Jesus 
not church tradition. We got to follow Jesus, not your spouse. Got to follow Jesus, not your favorite deacon. You got to follow Jesus, not your favorite preacher. You got to follow Jesus, not your children. You got to follow Jesus, not your occupation. You got to follow Jesus. You want to get committed at the coronavirus? Jesus lays out our requirements for discipleship. It's laid out to you in the scripture. Now the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to go back to the lackluster, non-committed, uncommitted, unconcerned, only being involved in something when your friend is, is, the, is the president? Or only, only getting involved, only getting when you get your way? Or, you're, or are you ready to come back into the sanctuary? Are you ready to come back into the service like the old saints used to say, for God, I'll live. And for God, I'll die. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is our prayer. My prayer is that you are this word is stirring something on the inside of you to cause you to be reflective to cause you to get ready for our return. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm trying to build you up. To let you know that the word and God has requirements for you and I. All that Jesus has done for us in this pandemic. As we watch loved ones going on home. We lost, we've, we've seen friends, acquaintances succumb to the coronavirus and this pandemic. But yet, for some reason, you're still here. For some reason, you, you overcame the pandemic. You, you, you were tested positive, but God kept you in the pandemic. Now, I don't know what is going to get you to put God first after dealing with a whole pandemic. And you've got the testimony that I'm still here, and it's by the grace of God. Will you adhere to God's requirements for discipleship? I, I'm looking for some disciples of Jesus Christ to return to this 375 Bristol Street. God is looking for some disciples to return back to 375 Bristol Street. Now what are you looking to be when you come back to 375 Bristol Street? Perhaps there's someone here on the line has been inspired and challenged by the word that you want you're ready to come back you're ready to give your life to the Lord and do it fervently and do it authentically if that's you and God is knocking at the doorposts of your heart make Jesus your choice right now don't wait don't hesitate don't procrastinate if that's you would you say these words in prayer with me Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I admit, God, I'm a sinner. And I'm in desperate need of a Savior. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus was born of a virgin. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe Jesus rose from the dead. And I believe I will be with you if and when I die. Before you should crack the sky, I'll be with you in heaven forever. Thank you for saving my soul. And I'll serve you for the rest of my day. In the name of Jesus, 
Amen. Friend, my brother, my sister, young man, young lady, if that's you, you made the best decision of your life. Hallelujah. Perhaps there's also someone on the line that is not a member of a ministry, not the member of a church, and you've been watching us for a while in this pandemic, but you've not made a commitment. I offer, I offer it to you today. Come on in with us. Help us lift up the name of Jesus. You can join even virtually live now. If you put your name on the comment section, one of our leaders will get to you and we'll help you walk you into the uh, the fold of the Little Rock Baptist Church. If that's you, write your name down. Hallelujah. It's time for prayer, y'all. Would you write your name, write those names down and help me like you've done every week? With this prayer list, this virtual prayer list, would you do that with, for me? Hallelujah. Write those names down. And while you're doing that, also get ready for our communion. Make sure that you have your elements ready. Right after our prayer, we're going to shift right into our virtual communion service. This is one of my daddy favorite songs. Listen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Hallelujah. My daddy's song. No turning back. Oh, no turn, turning back. The world behind me. Yes, sir. The cross be. Lift your hands wherever you are. The cross before me. No turning back. Oh, no turn, turning back. I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. Though no one joins. Is that your testimony? Still I will follow. Though no one join me. That's old school. Still I will follow. Though no Father, we've decided to follow you. Though no one join us, we're committed to following you. We're leaving the world behind us. We're committed to following you. 
We're ready to be committed after this coronavirus, God, but we need to, you know, to empower us. Change our hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Recommit our spirits in the name of Jesus. God, we've missed our fellowship one for another, but we don't despise this time. But God, we want to use it wisely for your glory. And I pray for every heart of the Little Rock Baptist Church, every mind of the Little Rock Baptist Church, every spirit and soul that's watching this live this morning in the name of Jesus. Recommit us now in the name of Jesus. Give us a drive and a determination to let all of the things that hinder us from being all in, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Do it now, O oh God, and we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I pray for every name that's been lifted on this comment section, one by one, name by name. Every home that's represented, every family that's represented. In the name of Jesus, God, I don't got to call names because you already know every situation, every circumstance. So every name that's lifted, we lift it up to you. On you, knowing that you care for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your keeping power. Thank you for your delivering power in the name of Jesus. If it's healing, we declare it. If it's peace, we declare it. If it's finances, we walk in it in the name of Jesus. We love you and we give you praise and glory. And God, we count all these things done. In the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say amen and praise God. Hallelujah.
glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's get ready for communion. for us to gather together again to worship the Lord in this virtual space and doing it together sharing and fellowshipping Holy Communion together uh, God has blessed us in a mighty way to be able to still connect and ad adhere to the commandment of God to do this in remembrance of me. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he told his disciples to go to an upper room and there he would celebrate the Passover with his disciples for the last time. In an upper room, Bible records that Jesus lifted the bread up towards heaven and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, the Bible declares that Jesus took the cup, said, this is my blood shed for the remission of sin. I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And the Bible records when Jesus lifted up the elements towards heaven that he prayed for them. And we certainly can't pray as Jesus did, but we want to ask our deacon, our chairman, and our vice chairman is with us this, this morning. I'm going to ask him to pray a special blessing over this bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and this fruit of the vine that represents the shed blood of our Christ on Calvary's hill. Father God, we say thank you. On this day, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for, this, for the body of the Lord and Savior of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn it now from a common from a spiritual to a common use. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, once again, we come another first Sunday to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to turn this wine from a common use, Lord, into a spiritual use. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Oh, yeah. and pray that you have already prepared your elements and whatever you have that you've set apart and consecrated to represent the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will you eat, eat all of it and have a moment of silence Hallelujah. Whatever you decided to represent the blood of our Christ, drink ye all of it. Have a moment of silence.
Amen. After the Bible records that after they all celebrated the Passover for the last time that they went out to the Mount of Olives and sung in hymn, uh, we're going to bid you farewell and give the benediction. I hope and pray that this worship experience has been a blessing to you. Certainly it has been a blessing for us uh, to share with you what God is doing uh, in this house and for us virtually. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is our prayer. I love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. I love you. I love you. Not a thing you can do about it. God. Yes.